Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending September 22nd, 2018. This is the first full day of fall for 2018. And I've got my, I don't know if you can see it on camera here, but got my coveralls on 50 degrees this morning. It's starting to warm up a little bit more, so I may be able to take them off in a little while. Sitting here watching the ITL report, want to give a plug to that too. He's given my show a plug so many times I should plug it. It's still a weekly show. Now, as you know, my show's gone to every two weeks approximately, twice a month, but you can still catch the ITL report every week, and he does a variety of subjects. This week it's about, well, I'm about halfway through watching it, and it's about a holster that he bought on Wish.com, so check out his channel if you get a chance. The link is down below. So today's show is going to be a single subject show. I have in other videos talked about a generator I got with a tax, uh, not a tax refund, an insurance refund. I got an insurance refund for $400.00. And uh, between the open box item and some coupons and special sales, I got this generator, normally $479 plus tax and shipping. Got it for $400. There it is right there. I'll zoom in on it. That is a Westinghouse 2200 IXLT. Rated at 2200 peak watts, 1800 continuous watts. And as you can see there, I have got a contractor's kind of extension cord. This is not your regular... $12 extension cord that you go and buy at Walmart or even at your local hardware store. I would suggest if you do want to run a generator to power things in your house, use contractor extension cords as much as possible. Except maybe you could use um, a little bit cheaper one, maybe a 10 amp unit to individual things that you're powering, provided you know for a fact they don't draw more than 10 amps. You can use the less expensive extension cords, but don't get the, the cheap, cheap, cheapy ones. It is just not worth it. You've got voltage drop, voltage loss, and you can also even uh, cause some heat problems, too. I mean, I've seen people do stupid things like use those little uh, lamp cord extensions that are probably made to not handle more than just a couple of amps and use them to try to run a power saw or something like that off of them. Not good at all. Those things can end up melting, shorting out, causing a fire, so... Anyway, I bought this generator back in January of 2018. All I've been doing up until recently is just testing it out, running it about once a month, uh, powering a few things. But what I did finally, uh, because of a power outage at the very last week of August, uh, before I left, a week before I left on my trip to the Buckeye Boys Clubhouse, we had a power outage. Uh, storms came through and a lot of communities around the northern Illinois area, probably well over 100 communities, lost power. And uh, it was it varied between some people only lost power for three or four hours, some people lost power for 24 hours. Our section lost power for about 13 hours, so I did run the generator for 13 hours continuously, and it had no problem at all powering my refrigerator, my sump pump, and my furnace, all three. So that's pretty good. I did before I'd even hooked this up too. I'd run some amperage tests too to see um, if the essential items I wanted to run. The two most essential items were the sump pump first of all, so that my basement doesn't flood out, which is a pretty heavy draw. I think that starts on about 7.5 amps and takes about 3.5 amps to run. So you do have to uh, worry about that too. What's the peak amps on the stuff too when it first draws and can your generator handle it? Uh, then the refrigerator so that the food doesn't spoil. Now typically if you have a power outage of 4 hours or less, you don't have much to worry about. But 12, 13 hours or like I've had in the past too, I've had power outages that have lasted 3 days, especially when both of the poles in my backyard got knocked out in a windstorm. Um, it was the best they could do to get power back in three days, and I had the trucks parked in my backyard. So anyway, long story short, I fired up the generator, uh, ran it for 13 hours straight, had no trouble whatsoever. It seemed to, uh, after I checked after about six hours, it's got a 1.1 gallon fuel tank, and it's got an eco mode too, so that when the sump pump and the refrigerator aren't actually running, it'll go down to a low idle and just sip the gas. So after six hours, I still had quite a bit of gas left, maybe about a quarter of the tank left. So I probably could have gone eight hours before I had to refill it, but I think it's still good to uh, check on your generator. So anyway, yeah, I think it's un under the kind of loads that I am doing. Now, if you were doing this full bore, running it at 1,800 watts, which it can do, uh, I would say probably it's more likely you're going to get about four hours run time out of it. And it's good anyway. I, I think every so often it's good to come out there and uh, shut it down, check the oil level, check your... Uh, your gas, you know, add the gas to it and everything like that and just keep an eye on it. Now what I also do, they don't recommend this. Well, as you can see, I'll show you this too. This is a portable generator. It only weighs about 48 pounds. So you can see I have got it actually cable tied to my shelf there so nobody can just run in here and pick it up and run off with it. Not that I've ever had anything stolen. This uh, 
I've never in my neighborhood had anybody really mess with anything at all. So that's not been a problem, but just in case, you just never know. So it's good to do that. But um, they also do not recommend you run it when it's running anywhere but outdoors. So what I do, and this is not recommended, and I would say don't take my advice, do it the way the manufacturer tells you. But what I do is I open my back window there. I have that all the way open. I open this side door all the way open and leave it open. And then I also, over here, see those two blocks of wood underneath there? I take them and I pull this door down, but I leave it open about this much propped up by those blocks of wood. So I've got airflow from the front, from the back from the window, and then off to the side there. Uh, but like I said, that's still not following the manufacturer's recommendations. So if you want to be absolutely perfectly safe, follow the manufacturer's recommendations all the time. Probably the best way to do it if you uh, are running it and it's, a, it's stormy, which that's the, the problem a lot of times when you have power outages, it's stormy. I would say build something like a small doghouse, but all the sides of the doghouse have, uh, have those big huge vents on them where it's uh, like a lattice work that's sloping down at a 45 degree angle so the, uh, the rain won't and the water won't get in there, but it'll still allow a, a large amount of ventilation. That would probably be the way to play it safe and then just have it so you could flip the top or the sides down to service the generator and uh, stuff like that. So anyway, I will show you how I've, I've got it here with the contractor cable, like I said, and then what I do is I take the contractor cable and bring it over here to my power input port. Now, I'm not going to show details about how to wire this generator up for the house because if you know how to do it, you already know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, probably get a licensed electrician to do it because uh, hooking up a generator to be used in a house, there are so many ways to do it wrong and you can end up hurting yourself hurting others or even burning down your house or destroying your electrical system. I've seen videos on YouTube where people uh, recommend back feeding through your electrical panel and yes it can be done and it will function to uh, get the electricity into your house but I would never recommend that because there are too many things you could do. You could back feed the power down to the electric line not realizing you're doing it and end up killing somebody out there that's working for the electric company working on a line so would not recommend that at all so anyway for the next part of this video, I'm going to go downstairs and I will show you how I have all my three items, my three main items, ready to go in case I need to fire up my generator. Okay, we are down in the basement now and I will show you. This is where the feed port comes in. You can see it here. Let me stick this camera up there. Hopefully you can see it. So, I've got it plugged in. That's not an actual outlet that's connected to anything. All it's connected to is the feed port on the outside of the box. So. There's no electricity going to it until I plug the generator into it from the other side. And then it goes down to this right here where I can plug in three different things too. And the one extension cord, that's a 10 amp extension cord which is more than adequate for the sump pump over here. It runs over here to my sump pump pit and all I have to do is unplug it from the outlet, plug it in the extension cord and then my sump pump is being powered by the generator feed. I've also got this right here, and as you can see, I got it marked to the refrigerator. If you can kind of see it there, so that nobody comes down here and accidentally unplugs it. This extension cord actually is powered into my main grid through this outlet here downstairs, and it actually runs through the crawl space and then up to power the refrigerator. So my refrigerator, even though it's got a plug right behind it, it is always plugged into the basement here so that I have easy access to just take this and put it over there and plug it in over there. I just it, it, it stretches out a little bit so um, I can just plug it in over there so then I have the refrigerator and I have the sump pump powered and then finally for the furnace I've actually got a special box here that I wired myself and it's got there's the line feed when the furnace has the line coming in to feed it I can also turn it to the off position or I can flip it over and I can actually feed it through the generator. It's got a power input port to feed through the generator so it just depends on how I flip the switch. Line, off, or to the generator and there's no way any electricity can back feed to anything. The furnace is isolated. It's either going to be fed by the line or it's going to be fed by the generator. There's no way any of them can go the wrong direction. They're totally isolated from each other. And like I said before, I'm not going to tell you how to wire up the box or how to do the switch. That is not an ordinary, it may look like an ordinary double pull, double throw switch, but that is specially high rated one for higher amperage so don't just go down and get a double pull double throw switch and put it together yourself unless you know exactly what you are doing 
So after running these for 13 hours, I am more than satisfied with the performance of the generator. It can actually handle the loads that it says it can handle. Um, it's not bragging. That's what I kind of wondered about too. I mean, a lot of generators make claims and uh, this one actually does meet these specs. It can actually handle and put out 1800 watts continuous if need be. Now most of the time when the sump pump isn't running and when the furnace isn't running and the refrigerator shuts off, it's not really handling any load at all. It's just idling down or in some cases too I have another extension cord that I can plug in and run it to the front part of the house too and uh, power some lights if need be. Uh, but instead typically what we do is we have these LED lanterns for power uh, emergencies and they last 24 hours easily. Probably even a little bit longer than that but um, yeah we've got uh, LED, gener uh, LED, LED lanterns for that. So. So far, and I don't know, so let me let me answer some of the criticisms that I know people will say because they've said it in other videos that I've seen about generators. Why don't you get the Honda generator? It's way better quality. Well, I'm not sure it's way better quality. It may be better quality, but for $1,000, and by the time I get it shipped out and pay taxes, more like $1,200, well, I could buy three of these generators for that price. So if my generator lasts maybe three or four years, I could throw it away, buy another one, have it last another four or five years, throw that away and still I will not have paid as much as I did for a Honda and the Honda is 2,000 watts peak but it's only 1,600 watts running so that's right at the very ragged edge of what can power all my devices so if I uh, guess wrong or one of the devices pulls just a little bit more on startup I could have a problem with that because when you first start up motors like for a furnace or for a sump pump they pull quite a bit more sometimes more than double what they do running and uh, yeah if I have a generator that can't handle all three things then I just paid $1,200 for a Honda generator that can't handle all three things. and I figure over a period of four to five years uh, with that $400 generator I've got, it's only cost me about $8 a month or less to uh, run it. So if at the end of that time it's no good anymore for anything, it's served its purposes for me and it's, uh, it's been a good cost item. So anyway, if you have any comments, uh, any uh, suggestions, anything like that, uh, let me know. I uh, like to hear from you and what's going on. So take care everybody and I will catch you in about two weeks or so.